We will begin this install by laying the bike on its left side. This will make the installation much easier. Remove the OEM clutch cover. This will not be reused with the Recluse Core EXP clutch kit. Remove the OEM pressure plate bolts and springs. These will be replaced with Recluse hardware. Remove the OEM pressure plate and ensure that no washers have stuck to the underside. The OEM pressure plate will be replaced. Remove the OEM throwout and ensure that no bearings or washers are misplaced. The OEM throwout, washers, and or ball bearing will be reused. Remove the OEM center clutch nut. Using an impact to remove this is okay, but do not use an impact when tightening the center clutch nut. On cable actuated models, you will not reuse the OEM center clutch nut. Note here though that hydraulic clutch actuated models will reuse the OEM center clutch nut if you're using an adjustable slave cylinder. Tech tip, if you are having trouble with the clutch spinning, you can place the transmission in top gear and hold the rear brake while turning. The entire clutch pack and center clutch can now be removed at once by pulling up on the center clutch itself. It is very important to inspect the backside of the center clutch to ensure that the thrust washer has not stuck to it. The thrust washer must remain on the main shaft, resting on the inner basket surface. Separate the OEM frictions from the OEM steel drive plates. Seven OEM frictions will be reused, but all of the OEM steel drive plates will be replaced. Now soak the EXP disc in oil for at least five minutes. Install the Recluse center clutch hub. It should slide onto the main shaft without much force. Place the provided lock tab washer on the center clutch hub. If your clutch kit came with a Recluse center clutch nut, install it. The Recluse center clutch nut must be used if provided or damage can occur. Note here that most hydraulic models will reuse the OEM center clutch nut rather than a recluse center clutch nut. Tighten the nut to 50 foot-pounds. Do not use an impact to tighten the center clutch nut, as clutch drag and damage can occur. Bend the lock tabs up around the nut using channel lock pliers. Begin installing the clutch pack, starting with the thin recluse drive plate. The remaining drive plates will be visibly thicker. Follow this first drive plate with an OEM friction. Continue this alternating pattern until you have 8 steel drive plates and 7 OEM frictions. Now install the EXP disc as the final part of the clutch pack. The EXP disc is indexed into the same outer basket slots as the friction discs. It is okay if the EXP disc is sticking above the tangs of the outer basket, but it shouldn't be much more than half of the entire EXP thickness. Reinstall the OEM throwout assembly, ensuring that all washers and bearings are in place. Note, a few models will use a recluse supplied throwout. Reference your specific install manual to determine if an OEM or recluse throwout is used. Now place the steel lining plate onto the underside of the pressure plate, indexing the tabs. While holding the lining plate and pressure plate together, seat the pressure plate into the center clutch hub. Ensure that the lining plate has not come unindexed. Install the recluse pressure plate springs, screw sleeves, and pressure plate bolts. Torque the bolts to 9 foot-pounds. At this point, we are ready to set the installed gap. Note, most hydraulic clutch models will include a recluse adjustable slave cylinder. You will need to reference your specific install manual or our adjustable slave cylinder video for proper adjustment of this. Since we are working with a cable actuated model here, we will make our adjustment via the pressure plate adjuster, not a recluse adjustable slave cylinder. Loosen your clutch cable so you have quite a bit of slack. If necessary, you may need to go down to the inline adjuster. This is a precautionary step to ensure that throwout interference does not occur during adjustment. Make sure that the set screws are loosened, but not fully removed. These set screws must be loose any time an adjustment is made. Using the long end of a 5mm Allen wrench, Gently thread the pressure plate adjuster inward or clockwise until it comes to a noticeably tighter spot. This is the point at which the adjuster is now making contact with the center clutch nut and it is also known as your starting point. Now that you've found your starting point, go up to the clutch lever and make sure you still have slack in the clutch cable. If the lever has become tight, you must put more slack into your cable before you continue with any more initial gap adjustments. Now switch to the short end of the Allen wrench. This will provide more leverage.
turn the adjuster clockwise or tighter one complete turn plus two tick marks past your initial finding of the starting point. Now that the installed gap is set, use a four millimeter Allen wrench to tighten the two set screws. The set screw should be flush or slightly below flush, torqued to 40 inch pounds. Readjust your clutch lever free play to match OEM specification. This is usually about 10 to 20 millimeters of movement. A recluse clutch cover is required for clearance as the Core EXP clutch kit is taller than OEM. The recluse clutch cover should be installed using the OEM gasket or, if supplied, an O-ring cord. You will reuse your OEM fill plug and OEM bolts. Torque these bolts to OEM specification. Now that we have everything buttoned up, we must verify our installed gap adjustment by checking free play gain. Wrap the supplied rubber band around the grip and clutch lever as shown. With the bike warmed up and in neutral, quickly blip the throttle to about 5,000 RPMs. This is what proper free play gain looks like. The lever should move in 1 8 inch towards the bars, which indicates a properly set installed gap. If you can't see the lever moving, it is indicating that your gap adjustment is too big. To remedy this, you must turn your pressure plate adjuster counterclockwise until you get the 1 8 inch of lever movement. If you are getting more than 1 8 inch of free play gain, it is indicating that your installed gap is too small. To fix this, you must turn your pressure plate adjuster clockwise to make a larger install gap and achieve less free play gain. Do this until you get 1 8 inch of lever movement. Once your free play gain is set, you are ready for the break in procedure. With the transmission in neutral and your hand off the clutch lever, rev the engine 20 times, letting the engine return to idle between each rev. Now shift the transmission into first gear and let out the clutch lever. The bike should stay running and in place, maybe with a little bit of forward creep. Once you have the bike idling in first gear, slowly roll on the throttle without using the clutch lever and accelerate to approximately 5,000 RPMs, then come to a complete stop. Repeat this 20 times. Now shift the transmission into second gear. Do the same sort of takeoffs as you did in first gear and repeat 10 times. Reconfirm that you have 1 8 inch of free play gain. Do not ride without sufficient free play gain. 